Hi students, let's continue with this Amdans law that is related to the fixed workload. Amdans law for fixed workload. So whenever we're talking about the fixed workload, we have to apply only the Amdans law because it is work only on fixed workload. So this is a formula for the uh, Amdans law. Uh, speed up of a parallel computer. Now let's see how we are getting this formula. Okay, so let's take P is the number of processor. Because this is a parallel computer, the Amdahn's law is work, uh, work with the parallel computers. Means you can work on se serial, sequential or the parallel, anything. But here P is nothing but number of processors. Now, let's prove this relation. Let's prove this relation. Let's take an example of execution of a task. Simply take some task on a computer with single processor. Okay, and P the number of processor. We already know that the speed up of the formula. What is the speed up of the formula? S of P. I already explained in the previous video. If you don't know how, uh, what is the speed up, you just go and watch the previous videos. And uh, I'm directly writing the formula here. S of P. The speed up is nothing but the sequential by parallel. T of S is a sequential. T of P is a parallel. So whenever the sequential means T of 1, and the parallel means uh, T of N. So here N is nothing but a P. N is nothing but a P. Number of processor. Okay. So you can also write it as T of 1 is a sequential. T of P only. Because in place of N I am taking P. That is a number of processor. You call it as a equation 1. Now let the execution time required to complete the given task. Some task is there. If I want to complete this task. The execution time required to complete the given task on a computer with single processor. But single processor, the execution time will be T. This is the execution time for a single processor. Single processor. Just remember this. Now, when same task executed on parallel computer, if, it is, if you are working on the single processor, execution time of a single processor for this particular task is T. Suppose, if I am working on the parallel processor, what is the execution time? The parallel processor, when the same task is executed on parallel computer with P processor, because the number of processor here is a P. With P processor, the time depends on sequential and as well as a parallel time, right or wrong. If you are working on the serial, only one option, serial is there. When you are working on the parallel, when you are working on the parallel, Sequential plus parallel. Both should be required. Right or wrong? When we are working on the parallel, you require the sequential plus parallel. So, the execution time of parallel processor is nothing but sequential computing. Some part of the task may require sequential access. Some part may require the parallel when you are working on the parallel processor. Sequential computing plus parallel computing time both should be added then only you will get the execution time for the parallel processor so what is the sequential computing just now we are taking so the sequential computing is nothing but f into t okay let's take f into t plus 1 minus f into t by p this is nothing but the time required, the execution time of the parallel processor for uh, whereas P is the number of processor. It's nothing but the sequential computing plus parallel computing. Sequential computing plus parallel computing. How, how you get this? I already explained in the previous video. Uh, means uh, whenever the, whenever the sequential fraction just now, uh, I already explained. I'll just show you to this here. What I said, for the sequential fraction of program, if you consider some part of the sequential fraction of program, you call it as a F. And the remaining parallel computing of a program is 1 minus F. This is all I already said, the sequential. This is a fraction of a program. Means in this task, some fraction of the program has to work in sequential. So the time is T, that some part is F. Some fraction of the program has to work in sequential. So that's why F into T. And this is a parallel. 
and the remaining part 1 minus f is a parallel so this is a fraction of a uh, parallel computing of a program so 1 minus f into t by p what is this p this is the number of processor so sequent this is a sequential computing and this is a parallel computing time parallel computing it's nothing but the sequen uh, one, oh, 1 minus f is a fraction of the time the task that is executed in a parallel into t by how many processor are there in the parallel p so this is t of p i think you understand what exactly this uh, execution time for parallel processor t of p is equal to f into t why i have written f here f is nothing but the fraction of the part that is executed in sequential that's why f into t which is a sequential part and coming to uh, the the remaining part is 1 minus f is a fraction of the time uh, fraction of the part that is executing in parallel into the time required for that fraction of the part by p is nothing but the number of processor in the parallel only the number of processor is there anyhow here it is number of processor is one only so that's why i didn't write here f f into t by one so i'm simply writing f into t okay the execution time for the single processor and the parallel processor single processor is the t and the parallel processor is f into t plus one minus f into t by p now from the equation one what is the equation one equation one is nothing but speed up of t of s by t of p sequential by parallel for p processor okay from the equation one we need to calculate the speed up right what is the ts ts the time required the time required here it is sequential t by f into t which is a sequential for parallel sequential plus parallel 1 minus f into t by number of processor right or wrong i simply substituted here t of is nothing but it's a t execution time of single processor is t that is what i have written here and what is the execution time for the parallel processor f into t plus 1 minus f into t by p that i have written here f into t plus 1 minus f into t i simply substituted what is the execution time of sequential and execution time of the parallel now evaluate take the t as a common and cancel all these things now you will get 1 by f plus 1 minus f by p so this is the equation 2 so from equation 2 we can say that we can say that the speed up of a time is always less than or equal to 1 or roi obviously it is less than or equal to 1 why because 1 by something means it's all all it is 1 either less than or equal to 1 if suppose 1 by 1 is there 1 you'll get and 1 by 2 means you're getting 0 0.5 and 0.25 so it is decreasing less than or equal to 1 so that simply s of p is less than or equal to 1 by f plus 1 minus f by p this is the amdan's law this is the amdan's law so i hope you understand how to calculate this amdan's law the thing here what i explained is i simply explained that the sequential as well as a parallel and what is a sequential fraction and the parallel fraction okay simply here try to take a task in the task if you are working with the serial only the time required is t of 1 and when you are working with the parallel means you have to consider sequential plus as well as a parallel okay thank you